I play a lot of Smash. Like, a lot. Oh god, that's a lot. With all this time down the gutter, I figured it'd be interesting to get some numbers and see how they compare to not only my own biases, but also the overall consensus of the Smash community. So I set out to play 100 games of Smash. I'm Ouroboros. Let's talk. To start off, let's set some ground rules. I play a lot of Ken and Ryu. Wait, 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 don't, don't click off the video. I know some people hate the FGCs, and I know that I don't really play Smash, but hey, at least I don't play Kazuya. Or Min Min. Or Steve. I figured that I could split the 100 games right down the middle. 50 with Ryu, then 50 with Ken. I will also always attempt to play best of three sets with everyone. Doesn't matter who they are and how much I hate that character. I'm going to regret this rule later, won't I? I will also be taking note of a variety of things. What moves I killed with, who I play against, the length of the matches, and the set and game count. With all those things out of the way, let's begin. Starting it off great with Ganon. You'll learn pretty quickly that I love fighting heavies. They're so much fun to fight against, especially as the Shotos. You're both just trying to get in and mess each other up as much as possible. They also tend to be pretty quick matches since you're both just holding forward the whole time. And this match was no different. I did get a couple of nice dare spikes, which really isn't saying much against Ganon, but I took the game 2-0. And then we get the exact opposite end of the spectrum with Samus. You'll learn pretty quickly that I hate fighting zoners. And they proceeded to run away from me the entire game. This is going to be a recurring thing, isn't it? I won, and they didn't rematch me. Oh, no. DK was next, and this was a pretty close set. I dominated the first game, they kept running into my focus attacks, which made things a lot easier, but they really turned it around the second game and really messed me up. Game 3 was super close, I took the first stock with what's called a late car cancel. This is a tech that only Ken and Ryu can take advantage of. In version 7.0, Ken and Ryu were given the ability to special cancel their down smash. If you charge down smash and then input any of their any input moves before the move comes out, it will cancel the down smash animation and you'll throw out the inputted move. I know that's kind of complicated, but it makes more sense when you see it. In the case of Tatsumaki and Shoryuken, it gives you a little bit of a speed boost which can really catch opponents off guard, especially with Ryu. It's a great bait, but is extremely tight. There's only a 3 frame window, so if you whiff, you just throw out a random down smash. It's a little risky, and I'm still trying to add it into my gameplay more, but it can make for great mix-ups and burst options. Anyway, I did get a nice little double dare confirm on the second stock. This is one of my favorite confirms. It's not true at every percent, and you do have to switch between a full hop and a short hop depending on the percent, but it's super satisfying when you get a good tech read. I did take the third game and won my first set of the challenge. Up next is Captain Falcon. Wow, we're starting off with some fun matchups. This is similar to heavies, you both just kinda mess each other up, but Falcon is just as explosive as the Shotos, except with aerial combos and grabs as opposed to my grounded combos. First game, I had a pretty dominant 3-0. I got a nice little shield break in F Smash and then focus into Shoryu. Second game was the complete opposite. I got torched the first stock and absolutely wrecked by an up tilt spike on the second. I took the first stock with a heavy up tilt. For those of you who don't know, Ken and Ryu have multiple versions of their moves based on how long you tap the A button, and also how close you are to your opponent. So you have light and heavy versions of up, down, forward tilts as well as their specials. There's also proximity jab and proximity F tilt. I know I'm explaining a lot of mechanics, but that's just how these characters play. It takes a bit to wrap your head around all of them, but if you put in the time, you'll eventually get the hang of it. Game 3 was close, my first couple stocks were rough, including an SD. But I gained my footing and did eventually win out the set. Up next is Marth. I honestly feel like Shoto's win this matchup, but I feel like I've also never played a very good Marth in Elite. I was dominating and got a shield break. I went for the read of the century and just completely whiffed. I did finish off the game with the most scuffed Tatsu combo, but it did the job. No rematch unfortunately, but I did get a set of 3 against a Doc. This was a great set. Super close the whole way through since Doc is a pretty explosive character. 
It did end with a bit of a whimper with a Shakunetsu Gimp, but that's just how Doc works. Live by the bad recovery, die by the bad recovery. Or just die by the bad recovery. Game 13 was against Puff. This honestly might be one of the most volatile matchups in the game. Ken and Ryu kill Puff unbelievably early, but Puff's advantage state against them is so dominant. They got an insane rest read, but unfortunately SD'd with a rollout. Second game was also fun, but I took the set 2-0. Ridley's next, we both managed to gimp each other on the first game, nothing really of note happened in game 2, and I won the set 2-0. Another Falcon for game 17. I got annihilated the first stock. God, that footstool was so clean. I clawed my way back with a couple nice F smashes. I'm a big fan of throwing out random moves, focus, F smash, Shoryu. They all help keep opponents in check. I honestly think playing dumb works a lot of the time. Nobody expects Shotos to be throwing out random smash attacks, and they can catch people off guard. I ended off my comeback with a spike. Fox is up next, and this is another volatile matchup. It's one I strongly prefer to play as Ken. I know that Ken and Ryu are technically Echoes, but they play so differently. Ken is much more of a rushdown character. His Hadoken is trash, and he has a couple extra input moves, his Crescent and Roundhouse kicks, that serve as great combo extenders and finishers. Ryu, on the other hand, is a much better all-arounder. His Shakunetsu deals a pretty good amount of damage and can travel much faster and slower than Ken's Hadoukens. His combo game isn't as good, but his neutral is considerably better. Fox is kinda combo food because of how fast he falls, and his shine makes throwing out Shakus more dangerous. Despite that, I still took the game with the help of a shield break and a great focus read. At this point, I was feeling pretty good about myself. I was playing a secondary, I'd played 18 games and only lost 3. Alright, so let's see who's next. Okay, let's do this. I had a pretty good shore you read on the first dock, but this just isn't fun. I have to out camp Sonic with Shakus, and that's just boring. Really, the whole game boils down to this. I won game one, and game two, they SD'd twice, so let's move on. God damn, I hate this character. There are a bunch of goofy spin dash Tatsu interactions. Ryu's lower leg is intangible during Tatsu, and since Sonic is so small when he spin dashes, you get meow. And then they just didn't play game three, which honestly I'm not really bummed about. Oh look, another zoner. This matchup is awful. Pac-Man's boxing tools are super good for no reason. His zoning tools are super good for no reason. His recovery tools are super good for no reason. So let me save you the trouble of this set. All right, next. All right, next. Okay, I actually like fighting Ices, but the matchup for both Ryu and Ken makes me want to cry. The extra hit stun from Nana deconfirms combos. Their combo game is absurd, but I somehow managed to win out game one with the help of a shield break. Then lost to Sopo. Then got wrecked game three. All right, I've lost six of my last eight, so let's just let's just take a nice little break. I made sure to space out my games for a few reasons. First, Shotos are a bit mentally taxing to play. You typically have to play around the opponent, meaning that your game plan shifts from matchup to matchup. I also wanted to get a wide data pool, so I made sure to play on different days and also at different times. Once I came back, I was greeted with Terry. Ah, uh, yeah, FGC matchup. These are always a ton of fun. They're so explosive and usually pretty quick games. I feel more comfortable going Ken, but I can manage with Ryu. But I guess I can do more than just manage because ya boy started off with a zero to death. Let's go, baby! This is what I needed after a bad string of matches. The whole set, I was thinking about how busted Ken and Ryu would be if they had super moves like Kazuya and Terry. God, that'd be so much fun. But alas, I didn't pay $5.99 for them. Whatever, we are so back. Fuck. All right, Luigi stuff, you absolutely cannot get grabbed and Cyclone is a pain to deal with. And they started off with a zero to death. And they ended it with a spike. Game 2 was weird, they SD'd once and then got gimped by up tilt. Cyclone and Tatsu had a weird clank, I think this is the first time I've ever clanked with that move, but I won so who cares. Game 3 was super close, I got another Kara Tatsu kill and would've won, but I misinputted Shoryu and got Hadoken. 
This happens more than you'd think. Sometimes I just go a little too far at the end of the DP input and just end up with a fireball. I ended up losing a close set 1-2, but much prefer it that way than fighting a song. Bayo is such a weird matchup. There's nothing you can really do as Ken and Ryu because you just can't catch her. At least for me. I just end up waiting there and hoping I can punish something because I'll never be able to air to air her. They had a great witch time, but I luckily caught them off guard with a down tilt and they died. Side note, how do all Bayos manage to SD or die off stage? She has one of the best recoveries in the game, yet I always see this. I completely choked game two and lost. And they didn't rematch with it. Well, that's okay. I won't let the next one slip. I let the next one slip. Kazuya Mishima. Pretty solid 2 O's set here. Starting off with a nice little shield break to start off game 1, and a focus and destroy you to finish off game 2. I think this is the first time I've ever killed someone with a sour spot shoryu. Poor Falcon. Next we've got two great 3 game sets against a couple of Marios. I got steamrolled the first couple stocks, highlighted by a great flood play on the first stock. I managed to make it close at the end and just barely missed a Karatatsu finisher. I won game 2 decisively with a 2-0, but would ultimately lose game 3 to a flood into fair. Great set honestly, lots of explosive plays and edge guards. Set 2, but with a different Mario. These were 3 of the most lopsided games I've ever played. I got destroyed at the first 2 stocks. I'm still dying to the up air into fair combo from these Marios, I don't know why. I could have sworn that you are supposed to DI that in, but maybe I just need to look into that again. Or I could just start trying to focus out of it. However, despite losing those first two stocks super early, I'd end up taking the game. And then I got three stocked in game two. And then I two stocked them in game three. It was a wild set and I even managed to get a kill with Nair on the second stock. Only four games left and we start off with Aegis. In theory, Aegis should wreck Shoto's, but in practice, Mithra typically curb stomps you, but then Pyra comes out and you curb stomp her. At least, typically. There are definitely some times where I just get destroyed by Aegis's. This was not one of those times. And we got all of the crazy mechanics in this game. I took the first stock with a focus into Shoryu, I took the second stock with a parry into Tatsu, and I took the third stock with a car cancel Tatsu. Game 2 was equally crazy. I took the first stock with a shield break F smash, they also managed to get a foresight through focus which I've never seen before. Second stock they kamikaze me for some reason, and the third stock I also had a great turnaround Shoryu. Pretty weird but fun set. Game 49 was against Lucas. I almost had the comeback but just couldn't quite get there. Lucas and Ness are really tough matchups for Shotos, but at least he didn't rematch me. Well, at least he didn't spam PK fire. And with that win, my 50 matches with Ryu are finished, so let's take a look at some of the numbers. In total, I had 32 wins and 18 losses, which I was pretty happy with. In terms of sets, I played 13 best of threes, won 10, and lost 3, which I was even happier with. Surprisingly, I only had one SD with Ryu. I mentioned that playing stupid works, so yeah, I have stupid SDs a lot. Maybe I should play Bayo. In total, I had 125 kills. 47 were Tatsu, 30 were Shoryu, 13 F smashes, and then it kind of falls off after that. I'm kind of surprised there were more SDs than shield breaks, 5 and 4 respectively. Towards the end, you have all the weird gimps, Nair, Shaku, Hadoken, light down tilt, light up tilt, Let's also take a look at the average game length. Some of these aren't really indicative of anything. Ganon is clearly an outlier, I only played one game against Ganon so there isn't enough data here. In fact, I doubt there's enough data here to really extrapolate anything, but I thought it'd be a cool metric to show. The total average was 233. This is the average of all games, not the matchups, which is why it isn't centered. I think this data is pretty indicative of which characters I enjoy playing against the most. Heavies and explosive characters tend to be faster games, while zoners tend to be slower games. It's no surprise that Min Min, Pac-Man, and Samus are in the slowest four, but what really surprised me was Terry. I figured with two punchy dudes going against each other they'd be quick, but it looks like I was wrong. I'm guessing these games turn into more traditional 2D fighters. Lots of neutral, whiff punishing, and micro spacing. Sonic is also really close to the average. 
However, keep in mind that one of the matches they SD'd twice, so that definitely threw off the average. In general, matches against Sonic were much longer. With the first half out of the way, let's get to the next 50 games with Ken. Starting it off with a great 3-stock against an Inkling, and a close game with another Mario. I'm still dying to that Mario up air and affair, but I took their last stock stupid early with Shorty. I'm guessing it was just bad DI? If you didn't know, you have two options to DI Ken's Shorty. The first is the usual down and away, but the second only comes in if you know you're going to die. You can SDI in, and there's a chance you'll fall out. It doesn't always work, and if you don't, then you end up with the worst possible DI, but it can save you. Wait, why am I telling you how to beat my character? Anyway, get used to seeing Ken getting kills with Shorty. It's gonna come up a lot in this section. And get used to seeing Spin Dash, because we've got another set against Sonic. Oh boy, Spin Dash! Luckily, I 2 them with the 3-stock on the first game, so it didn't take too long, and I absolutely robbed that last stock on the second game. Ken Shoryu is much better than Ryu's against Puff since it's strong all the way through. You can throw it out as an anti-air and it'll kill Puff stupid early. I somehow didn't die to rest on the first stock, and that led to a massive punish. I've even killed a Puff at zero with enough rage. Focus, Dare, Jab, Shoryu is a true combo that can kill at zero with bad DI and enough rage. I really tried to go for it in game 2 and ended up SDing for it, but I still took the set 2-0. Yoshi is a lot like the Bayo matchup. They just have so much aerial mobility that Shotos just don't have the tools to deal with, so I tend to mostly play a bait and punish playstyle with them. I got torched the second stock because apparently I don't know how to tech after like 1600 hours of playing. But that's okay. PT is a lot like Aegis where Squirtle is really hard to deal with, but Ivysaur and Charizard just become combo food. I landed a nice spike on the second stock, and guess I'll have to get them in the runback. There was no runback. Q trying to not get grabbed at zero. Pretty close set for the most part, minus the jank gimp to lose game two, but that's okay. Shoryu kills super early anyway. I'd go on to take the set 2-1. I have a love-hate relationship with Diddy. He's such a crazy character top level. Tweak is one of the most explosive players in Ultimate, but Elite Smash Diddies just don't play like him. The entire game devolves into run away, banana, hold shield. Which is just like, why? Why Why would you do that? I got a great catch on the second stock, but didn't get the kill from it. Fortunately, I got a couple of gimps in game three, so I'd go on to win the set. Next game was against Sephiroth, and honestly, nothing really crazy happened. Oh boy, more Samus, but oh my god, that zeroed to death on the second stock was clean! Maybe this will go well. I hate this character. And nothing like a Doc Rage quitting. I see a lot of clouds online. I was kind of surprised it took this long to run into one, but I feel the same as Diddy. Spargo is so explosive and aggressive, but most online clouds just spam back air. Fortunately, I have pretty good parries from years of playing Shotos, and got a couple of good reads on the second and third stocks, so I was able to 2-0 them. I'm gonna be honest, I think Korn kinda sucks. Maybe I've just never fought a good one, but I feel like they just don't have a ton of good tools. Definitely better than Marth, but just kind of a meh sortie. It was a bit of an unremarkable 2-0, but there were some goofy air dodges in the second game. One more game against Cloud, and oh my god, the first two stocks were clean and brutal! Please no more. <sighs> Look, I know that I'm not the best player, and I know that I play way more aggressive than I should, even the players that I like watching are pretty aggressive. Sky J, Cola, Light, those types of players. But why would you ever play a fighting game and then decide to just run away from your opponent? I just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've always joked with my friends that I'm going to develop my own fighting game with only rushdown characters and call it No Zoners. Like, this Samus would just run away and charge shot. At this point, I was really debating just disconnecting and getting rid of the always rematch sets of three rule, but... At this point, I might as well see it through to the end. Fortunately, these long games were followed up by a speedy 3-sock against some poor Mewtwo, and had a great game against yet another Falcon. Yeah, kinda got messed up by that hero. Yeah, kinda got messed up again, but I won, so we go to game 3. 
Hero is another character I love hate. He's so goofy, and I love goofy characters. Incineroar is even my third best character. And the RNG chaos that he brings to even competitive games is so much fun, but again, he just ends up running away from me. I honestly think he's a little underrated. I know people complain about his consistency, but you're usually going to find at least one spell that can help you in any given situation. At this point, I was tired of chasing after people and decided to take another break. There are 20 more games to go, and we start off with a nice zero to death. Oh, and it's a two-stock game. Why? Why do people do this? I always get so caught off guard when it's a two-stock. And I don't know which is worse, a one-stock game or a timed battle. Whatever, time for King DDD. I should be good here. I have a friend who plays a lot of the big Pingus, so I have tons of experience with this matchup. Why do I do this to myself? And oh look, another character who runs away from me and throws stuff at me. I did get another super early Shoryu kill on the second stock of the second game, but I mean, come on, just look at this. And I lost the set 2-1. Unfortunate, but at least the set was close. Finally someone fun. Fox is a ton of fun to play against. It's very volatile, Fox has insane mobility, frame data, and combos. He easily runs circles around Ken, but Ken really only needs like 3 or 4 neutral wins to take a stock. So it feels almost a little overwhelming at times, but finding those few neutral interactions feels so rewarding. And I started off the set with a 3 stock. I had an unfortunate SD in game 2, but also got a kill with heavy jab. Look, if you ever see a Ken throughout this move, it's never intentional. It just means we're too far away and the wrong move came. We're always hoping for the proximity version of it, but I honestly can't remember the last time I've killed someone with this move. I'd surprisingly end up losing the set 2-1 after a game 1 3 stock, but this was super fun the whole way through. Big props to the Fox for making some great adaptations after the first game. And now that I've had some fun, it's time for some more Sonic. Fortunately, they rage quit after the first stock, which just brings so much joy to my cold heart. And I know this for certain because they only used one spin dash in the last two stocks. Nothing quite like 3 stocking a CPU. Game 43 was against a Bowser. Again, I love fighting heavies, and would go on to win with a nice little shield break on the first stock. Then I would go on to play the most passive Lucario I've ever fought. The matches were laggy too, but at least it wasn't another Samus. I got a nice shield break kill on the first stock, but then got obliterated by an up tilt counter. I don't know why it did so much knockback, that move does like 2%. Well, whatever, I'd go on to take the set 2-0. I messed up this Toon Link in game 49, and all three kills were with Shoryu. The 50th and final game was against another Bowser. Let's just say that Sarah had a rough game. She SD'd on her first two stocks, and I spiked her to end the challenge. I did rematch her after, and the games were much closer, so sorry I had to put this one in Sarah. And with that, the 100 games of Smash is over. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for Ken. In total, I had 131 kills, and oh boy, 75 of them were with Shoryu. Yeah, told you to get used to seeing Shoryu kills. The next highest was with Roundhouse Kick. Same as Ryu, there were more SDs than Shield Breaks, 3 and 2 respectively. There were also 6, yes 6, Down Tilt Gimps, which is just a lot, a single Tatsu Gimp, as well as a couple of Dash Attack kills. Spoiler alert, those were just both up tilts that I inputted to her. Other than that, fairly typical stuff here, so let's take a look at the average match length. On average, Ken's matches were 4 seconds shorter than Ryu's, which I was honestly surprised at. Given how aggressive I play Ken and the more passive approach I take to Ryu, I expected Ken to be way shorter here, but no. Robin surprisingly took the shortest length at 52 seconds, but that was a single 2 stock game, so I don't think that really counts. Ness actually took the slowest spot here, probably because of all the PK fire spam, and because it's such a garbage matchup for Shogun's. I have to actually think when to approach them. Imagine that, having to actually think. Sonic is again close to the average, but remember, one of them rage quit, so that led to a pretty quick match. Samus, the Pikmin chucking gremlin, and the banana flinging monkey were also on the slower side. Toon Link was the only zoner to not take long, but that was also only one game, and I kinda steamrolled them. So, with all that, let's take a look at some combined statistics. I won't be doing combined kills just because there are multiple moves with Ken and Ryu that serve completely different functions, so that didn't seem like an apt comparison. 
I also don't want to do an average match time across the board because, again, I play Ryu and Ken in very different ways. The most common characters were Captain Falcon and... Uh, Sonic. Then Mario and... Uh, Samus. I was really surprised that I didn't see any of the go-to top twos. No Steve, no Rob, no Joker, no Roy. While I did play 100 games, I only encountered 55 unique players. That's only enough to cover a little over half of the Ultimate roster. But still, there's a lot of competitive staples that were shockingly absent from this challenge. I assume the longer that I did this challenge, the more those stats would even out, and this is honestly such a small sample size for the vast scope of Ultimate. So... What was the point of this? I don't know, man. I just really like Smash. Thanks for watching.